Stop! Sure you want the rest of it? Dirty Harry Miller Dirty Harry Miller Dirty Harry Miller Podcast Dirty Harry Miller Podcast Every penny's worth Welcome to Dirty Harry Minute. This, I believe, is the world's, uh, well, certainly Australia's first podcast devoted to analysing and just bollocking on about every minute of the 1971 Don Siegel-directed classic Dirty Harry, starring Clint Eastwood. Uh, With me today, I have our usual host, Jonathan. I'm John. This is the sound of my voice. Uh, Tim. Hello. And our guest, Ben. How's it going? Uh, Interesting minute. Well, certainly interesting from the point of view, it's action-packed. We've had a few minutes of uh, a lot of dialogue and exposition, but now we've got some real meat, um, you know, to pardon the pun, in that uh, Harry's eating a hot dog during a lot of it. But, uh, yes, what do you think of this minute, John? I loved it. Um, speaking of hot dogs, though, Harry doesn't... He's just had a plain hot dog. There's no sauce or any chutney or anything on it. How do you like your hot dogs, Tim? Um, I like my hot dogs with... Bit of onion, mm-hmm. cheese, ketchup. I like mine up late on Channel Ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just when he bites into it, you can see it's just a plain hot dog. I suppose it's easier for the the continuity girl. Or is it a bit of sauerkraut on there? I'm not sure. No, I think it's pretty. How plain. many takes did he have to do? How many hot dogs did he have to eat? And he's a dedicated uh, clean clean living. <laughs> Oh, so sorry, listeners, we're just watching it in slow motion and we're watching Clint chow down on his hot dog and his dry, his dry hot dog. And mutter really shit. Really convinced that that tasted good. I read somewhere he's, he's allegedly a vegetarian. Yeah. Um, but I've noticed in nearly every single Clint film, he eats steak or something like that in the scene uh, or smokes. Apparently, he's a staunch, you know, teetotaler and uh, non smoker and vegetarian. But uh, in every one of his films, you see him slugging back a beer or, or yeah. whatever, eating meat. You wonder if he, in real life he's like that, and then you just make sure the writers put these in his <laughs> films so he gets to dabble. Or maybe there's a veggie dog. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, what? San Francisco, 1971, a lot of hippies. So. <laughs> oh, and he's got to do this line with a mouthful of food. Do you reckon that was more hot dog, or did he have... To- <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, yeah, he certainly spits out a lot of it when he says hot. <laughs> So, basically, what's happened in the scene, uh, bank robbery about to happen. Uh, Harry's spotted a suspicious car outside a bank with a lot of cigarette butts on the ground next to it. He has gotten Jaffe, who yep, is the proprietor the of the hot dog stand he's currently at, to call the police with a certain number. And he says, now, waiting for the cavalry to arrive. Yeah, a nice nod to the, the Western, you know. Yeah. And as we see, when he comes out onto the street, there's a saloon named there, a, oh, hello. a bar that's called Saloon. Bites into his hot dog and the uh, alarm bell goes off, so he's got to get up and sling into action halfway through his uh, meal. And did any- anyone notice, the first person we see on the scaffolding, the worker, the, the builder, I guess, he looks like he's a friend of the cook because he's got some weird, he's, like, he's got a hat on. A Mario <laughs> Luigi. <laughs> Mario <laughs> Luigi. Character. What is Warrior. this? <laughs> It's a great little scene showing Harry. Harry knows he's never off duty. He's the one that'll get the call to come and stand up against the bank robber. Oh, it's very daring of him to just pull out the gun and start firing. And um, I think, yeah, Richard Schickel in his biography is it pains to point out that um, he's not particularly eager. He's got that faint headache before us in the previous minute and he just ambles out onto the street and... Um, yeah, he's a man, Schickel says, reporting for overtime, which he could do without, but has long since learned is inescapable. And maybe I'm reading too much into it, but he says halt, which is very official, whereas later on when he's in the stadium with Scorpio, he says, stop. Well, he does have a mouthful of food in this scene, though, which yeah. he doesn't have later. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about this? this is a great little mini spaghetti western shootout here, Ben. <laughs> well, it's well done. I'm Sorry, just hot curious dog to know if, in. like... You know, when they make actors vomit, they give them, you know, a mix to throw up. Yeah. I wonder if this is like, 
oatmeal and something, something he can he can speak through and like spit out, but you know, just for the right texture and consistency. My other question is why why would they have filmed this on the back lot? Why this scene? Is yeah. it because of the stunts? Um, the stunts, the cars, the cars, the cars and, yeah. yeah, yeah. Having to block off. Do you think stylistically they would have filmed it much different today? Just more cuts. Uh, uh, they'd Michael Bay it. <laughs> yeah. A few explosions. Yeah. A, a faster. Like, everything uh, would be sped up. I don't, And I don't think he wouldn't be carrying the same type of gun, you wouldn't think. I watched um, the start of that movie Swordfish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but for a long time, they were using the advertised DVD over, yeah. like, VHS. And the fact that it had this, like, bank robbery scene where, like, this explosion and it's sort of done in slow motion. Didn't it do the bullet time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like, wow, this is what DVD is all about. It's like, are they all going to be like swordfish? <laughs> <laughs> then count me up. <laughs> now, uh, Ben, you're our second gun expert, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> okay. Do you think the shotgun pellets would have really gone that far, I don't know, 100 yards or whatever to hit Harry? Yeah, but I suppose, yeah. like, um, you know, you might get hit by one or two. Yeah, because there's a spread. It was nice to see the um, interflory label on the the flowers cart, the flower yeah, stand. That bit of product up. placement, why not? Oh, ancient. The, the gold. It looks like a gold fist coming out of the side of the building. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a hydrant. hydrant. Yeah. yeah, they have them a really? lot in San Francisco. They've got what in the building, like like not on oh, the street, know, sort of. but it looks like a hydrant. Yeah, wow. They have a lot or of something them in to America, just give a fist bump to as you're walking <laughs> past. <like. laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> Got a good quote here from um, Schickel. This is the, obviously the, the first time we see Harry pull out his signature. 44 Magnum, which is in all the ads and all the trailers, and it's now iconic. And Schickel says, His weapon is a tool, like a tool a workman has bought for himself, having learned the equipment supplied by the company and chosen by the bean counters is not always adequate to the field work necessary. Uh, we're just rewatching those. <laughs> the just hot dogs spew out of his mouth. We need a YouTube channel of eating and speaking scenes in slow motion. <laughs> seeing food fly out. Some good stunt work in this. Yeah. Diving right through that window. Yeah. It's it's a really action packed scene. And like yeah, sure, now it would be sped up. And at the end of the scene when you know, Harry starts to walk over to one of the assailants that he's uh, injured, it's quite slow paced and you've got the tension of the sound of the alarm and yeah. what's going to happen now. You wouldn't see that in a film now. I, I don't think that sort of slow build up of what? Yeah. I just, I think it's I wanna see, do you reckon moments. that's... Describe when what you see, see when then. you see looking through the um, uh, the windscreen mm. from the driver or the passenger of the driver's perspective, and Clint Eastwood has shot the uh, the windscreen, and you can see him standing in front of the car a little ways off, but it's hard to know if it's a stunt person or if it's actually Clint Eastwood. Yeah, um, I'd probably bet if you can't see his face, that it's probably I not it's a him. stunt person. Although he's yeah. quite famous in this movie later on with the school bus scene of. Doing priding himself on doing his own stunts, but I don't know. Yeah, if you can't see his face, it's... yeah, I don't reckon it's him. Yeah, I like the uh, the flower power signs on the on the, the the flower stand, but of course it's a flower stand, so <laughs> I'm sure that predates the hippie era. It's a cool effect with the water uh, pushing the. Yeah. Everyone on IMDb points out you can see the the wire into the boot or the the oh, trunk, yeah, the yeah, trunk yeah, yeah, yeah. for the, obviously the explosions. And you can clearly see that, but they also refer to the um, the cannon, uh, what's underneath the car to allow it to flip the hydraulic, but I, I can't really see that. I think they did a pretty good job, really. Yeah, no, this is a really good minute. It's, it's We're sort of transfixed watching it yeah. over and over again. It's but. also impressive that they uh, you see the windscreen get hit when, you're, when they're inside the car. Um, the windscreen's clear. And then you actually see something yeah. strike the windscreen and make an indentation on it. Must be one of those ball bearings or something like that. But still, I mean, that's somebody's, you know, driving the car while yeah. they're being shot at. Pretty amazing. Do you think the uh, the driver's dead in your heart of hearts? Oh, what, the, in the film <laughs> context? 
Uh, I'd say <laughs> yes. <stop laughs> <the actor>. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say probably. It was a one take show. <laughs> <laughs> Just think if this happened in real life today, there would be many consequences for um, the detect- inspector. Yeah, for sure. In America. Yeah, no, well, certainly here there would be. So. Not if they were black. Later on, Breastless congratulates Harry on this pinch, as he calls it. But the mayor isn't there in person to give him his thanks. Was there some crap written somewhere about this scene and they were allegedly Black Panthers? Well, was that an early, like, was that in the script or was that just like an inference? that? Like... Oh, I think it was some bullshit someone made up oh, okay. trying to add more social analysis of the film. Like we're doing right now, but um, <laughs> the, um yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, they, it just looks like a heist, and they just happen yeah. to be, uh, you know, of that. Yeah. And once again, Harry is in complete control. Um, he stopped. Well, I I don't know what's going to happen in the next minute, but he's, he's got wearing, every, he's got an answer to everything. He does. He's still wearing that suit jacket. He, he looks like he's barely broken a sweat. <laughs> he looks calm as hell. It's great. He's the man. Yeah. Gives you a lot of confidence in the character of, uh, you know, that's going to take, you know, the, the tank to roll this guy over. I, the the actor for the remake has been staring me in the face the whole time. Who is it? Liam Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a very specific set of skills yeah. that he could use in this movie. <laughs> that's what he's been building his career <laughs> Um Do you think that, like, this is the movie that establishes the 44 Magnum thing. Yeah. Do you think this... Uh, scene was ever reshot or that they um, I mean how important is the gun to him as a character um, that if it had been a a lesser pistol or something like that would that have made him would that have like taken something away from the scene I think so because it feeds into the dialogue later on about being a, the most powerful hand, yeah yeah but it know. seems like this whole scene is designed to you know show off the gun yeah, yeah, um, yeah, and it's like, well, at what point in the script was it's like, well, we need to have a whole scene about the gun, you know, <laughs> the, the gun's that important, but it's not it, in the scheme of things, it doesn't really. Yeah. Like, if it was super important, then he'd at the end of the movie he'd throw the gun in the, the water, <laughs> not the the police badge. Um, yeah, it's the first time you see the badge at the end, and I can kind of see mm. that, like, you know, uh, why some people who really don't like this movie would find this scene like really objectionable. Like, just because, you know, of that kind of glamorization that, like, oh, he's a man with a big gun. <laughs> you know, it does become a bit like, uh, okay. Well, as I alluded to before, the subtext is that um, he's like a trade- a tradesman that's had to bring his own equipment to the yeah, job. That, yeah, yeah. he's got something bigger and badder mm. than everybody else. But, it's like, the fact that, you know, this is why I think they need Chico in this scene yeah. because it's like, you know, he would be surprised by the fact that he's, using something that's not standard issue um and yeah. like you know that this is why i need this like you know big gun to to do this sort of thing yeah you're right i don't in the movie i don't think we see any other cops with their guns no there's out. nobody no. out here yeah. or like well, you know. chico has that little oh that's right the p yeah the sort of pea shooter yeah. later on yeah imagine you had chico making the phone call and the, when he, mm. before the cavalry arrived, yeah, 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 and he's in action on the phone and watching, going, "Oh shit, this is a f- <laughs> I've partnered with a yeah. force to be reckoned yeah. with." It's a bit like in the fifth one, I think, when he has the um, the Japanese partner. Yes, or, yeah. and I think don't they don't they go on a I don't know, like at the start, they, there's a some sort of mission together and. Yeah. Harry does the business. My memories on the fifth one are a little bit vague. <laughs> don't blame me, <laughs> but. You, but uh, but yeah, Ben, there is actually some dialogue in the sequels that the carry goes. You know, I've seen thirty eights go through windshields, a screw, and they don't get the job done. Uh, yeah, address yeah, that, yeah. yeah. But in this movie, no, you don't have a comparison again, really, apart from Chico. I mean, the shot wouldn't have been the same, you know, without mm. like something like that. But yeah, it does sort of thing. I think that the myth of the myth of the gun, and especially since like Scorpio is doing that sort of same sort of thing, you know, sniping somebody from a. You know, he's got his own big gun <laughs> that he uses to feel like a big man. <laughs> in that movie, Branded to Kill and all those other... That's the only one I've seen. That isn't even Kurosawa, is it? Um, is the gun a bit of an affectation? Are there guns in any of those detective movies? Or? Yeah, it's, it's they a don't bit different. Gloss, I don't think they, they don't fetishize. 
they seem to fetishize their like samurai swords and stuff in the, mm. the movies, but I don't think like guns ever really caught on the same way. Well, it's quite a novel idea. Like if this was just a standard gun that he's just used to dispatch some criminals and you know stop the robbery, like you wouldn't you wouldn't think twice about it. Like, you, but it would just come across as a standard, you know, cop saves the day sort of thing. Yeah. But it kind of adds something or make, differentiates it from the rest because he's got this powerful gun. Stops the crime and then he sort of mentions it as he's <laughs> yeah, yeah. like. <laughs> was this uh, like? Do you know, John? If this was um, uh, like a new invention at the time, like was something was a gun that big, like the forty four Magnum, only available on the market within the last couple of years, or has this been something? It's. Uh, I'll have to take uh, that as a comment, but I think you could be right there. I think it was yeah a recent development. I'm not sure. And I'm really curious to know, yeah, if this did like, you know, if people sort of walked out of the movie going, I've got to get me one of those. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and how did police departments feel about like, you know, people carrying guns like that? Yeah. <laughs> well, with the advent of the serial killer, like people would have wanted to protect themselves. <laughs> Just walk like, out I want the most powerful gun. <laughs> <laughs> so shoot the bastards. Yeah, yeah. That's my policy. <laughs> Walking around with a machine gun. Although I suppose that's not like that uncommon in America. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think this was the best way to solve the um, the bank robbery, Ben? Him just walking out into the street. Well, I mean, you know, this is what you go to pay. This is what you pay to see as uh, in a movie. In a movie, yeah, you know, the, to be taken care of quickly and efficiently, and like, I mean, they they shot at him first, didn't they? I yeah, think. yeah. So, I think that's the normal <laughs> procedure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, it makes it okay then. Yeah. It's like, you know, at the end when the bad guy, like, oh, I'm not going to kill you, but then the bad guy does something. That's right. Like, you know, That's he, right. He, he accidentally He's given them a the chance. Bit. Yeah, yeah, he's he tried, you know. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. But yeah, it's a great action-packed scene, really, with um, hopefully even better things to come. Do you have anything else to say about this, Tim? Um, just showing Harry being a bad mutter? No, I, I think um, the, gun, the gun did all the talking. And you like... <laughs> You like the Luigi and Mario's on and the Wario. <laughs> I think these guys probably had a fairly challenging task because they wouldn't have been there when the car accident and the stuff would be going on. You're like, talking about the uh, guys on the the guys the on scaffold. the, the scaffolding, scaffolding because you know they wouldn't recreate it for those guys to watch while they were filming it. So they would just be told, <laughs> yeah. "All right, you're seeing a car flip over. You're yeah. seeing this. Oh my god!" You know. The, so I mean, that would have been an interesting day's work for that guy and that guy and that guy <laughs> and that guy. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit like when uh, you you hear or see footage of people in um, in nightclub scenes, and there's no music. Yeah, in the yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's laughs> ah, hmm. time to close, I guess. We'll catch you next time on Dirty, Dirty Harry, Harry, Harry Minute Harry. Minute Minute, minute. Not podcast. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's still an anti podcast. <laughs>